Welcome, everybody. Hey, thank you all for attending this live wire. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Daniele. I am a developer relations manager for Signal Wire. In my daily work, I take care of the documentation of our products. I make sure that our APIs are intuitive and easy to use, and that developers using our SDKs can build their products with as little friction as possible. On the right here, and actually below here, you see Mohib. And while I will be leading the first two sessions of this live wire, Mohib will be leading the, the last two sessions. So you will meet him too. This live wire is going to be split in sessions. Today, we are going to build a multi-party video conferencing application with basic features, such as a list of participants in a room, um, buttons for muting or unmuting, or screen sharing. In the next session, on February 23rd, we will add room preview capabilities on top of what we will build today. So you will be able to see basically a preview of what's inside the video room before joining it. Then on the 9th of March, Mohib will show you how to add dynamic layout switch into the room and how to assign layouts and roles to the, to the, to the users in the room. And finally, on March 23rd, we will show you the final gem, uh, which is how to integrate a chat into the self-same video room that we have been building in the previous episodes, including this one. This is the final product that we will, we will have um, after these four workshops. It's a video of what, what we will, you, will, um, you can expect to build. So you can see now you can switch camera, you can switch microphone, and you can actually access a chat, um, a chat room inside your video room. So that's pretty neat. You can also share your screen um, as you would do in any, um, in any video conferencing application. But before we get started, before we get started, a few housekeeping information. During the workshop, we'll be working in Code Sandbox, which is a web-based web IDE. There will be a link to the application in the chat, in this chat that you find here, which you can open to start writing code with me. Make sure to ask questions if you want to know more about something. The chat is open and we have people on, on standby to help answer them. And anyway, at the end of, the, of this event, we will have a question answer uh, session. So just feel free to ask any question you may have. And if you, if you couldn't get your application to run during our live coding, don't worry about it. We will be posting a link to the final built application at the end of the workshop. So you can use that one. The API credentials that, that we will use in the application will be good for about a week. We will email you when the credentials are refreshed, but to continue using the application without disruptions, you will need to replace the, the default credentials with one of your own. Of course, we are here if you need help on that. Now let's see what is the key difference between SignalWire and other platforms. The key is this word, cloud rendered. SignalWire video is cloud rendered. What does this mean? This is how popular video conferencing tools work. Say you have four clients or nodes joining a room. Each of these nodes will establish a connections with all the other nodes. I won't start talking maths here, but this mathematical notation here, O of N, describes what happens when the total number of nodes N grows. O of N means that no matter what, the number of connections will grow with N. Want to have 100 participants? Imagine 100 simultaneous connections in and out of your phone. This cannot possibly scale well. By contrast, the single wire video API is driven for each node by a single bidirectional connection with a server. No matter how many participants you have in a call, each of the nodes will only establish all of one connections, which is a constant number, 
Now, since the connection doesn't depend, the number of connection doesn't depend on n, the number of nodes, you can see why this scales very easily and allows you to handle hundreds of participants with the same resources that you would use with a uh, one for, for a one-to-one -one call. But let's go more technical. You have worked hard the whole year, but finally the time has come for a, for that vacation you booked. You booked a hotel somewhere in Spain, perhaps in Germany. You arrive at the hotel, and what do you do? Typically, you would go to the reception and ask for the key to your room. The receptionist may ask you to identify yourself, for example, by asking for your name. Think of what the receptionist is doing here. The receptionist is making sure that you're actually allowed to enter that room. If you are, they will turn around, take one of the keys from the wall, and then handle it to you. Why am I telling you this story? Because this is very similar to how you perform authentication with SignalWire APIs. And let's see this real quick. With SignalWire APIs, you have three entities. On the right here, you have a client which lives in the browser. This is what we will use today mostly. This is what user, users see. The client is like the customer of the hotel, right? It needs a key to enter a room. Then in the middle, we have your own server. This is like a receptionist. It checks who you are and decides whether you have, you're allowed to get the key you're asking. If you are allowed, your server will take the key from SignalWire and handle it to you. At this point, you can enter the room and a communication channel is established directly with SignalWire by passing your own server. On this channel, you share audio, video, events, and commands. Now your own server, as we have seen, is needed to implement authentication, an authentication and authorization scheme, your custom authentication or authorization scheme. You can also use this to access the REST endpoints to manage rooms and resources or to have real-time control over the rooms and participants. Today, though, we won't need to write our own server. We will not. We have prepared, we have prepared one for you, which we will, this server that we have prepared will allow everyone to join a room, to join any room, actually. Um, I will share the URL of this server with you so that you can use it to get tokens without having to write one. From the client side instead, well, the JavaScript SDK, which is what we will use, is, um, is the SDK that lets you build a video experience with just a few method calls. It's very powerful. This SDK interacts with the backend to authenticate the users, as we have seen. And it is what users interact with directly because it runs on the browser. And after this brief introduction, let's get straight to the code. Let me zoom this. All right, you should be able to see, to, to read the code here. I want to show, before getting started with coding, I want to show you what we are going to build today. The final, well, not really the final, but what we what, what you are talking about here. You can see here, um, uh, login form. I can enter my name here. I can enter the name of a room. Let's say live wire. And I can join this room. Now here, I will see a black rectangle, which right now doesn't contain anything, but it will contain um, a video stream. On the right here, we see a list of participants. It's empty right now, but you will have there a list of the all the current participants in the room and 
controls to mute or unmute their, their microphone or camera. At the bottom, you can see some buttons for controlling your own devices instead. You can mute your camera. You can choose which of the cameras you, can, you want to use. Right now, I have none of them. You can invite other users. You can share your screen or you can leave the room. I am going to leave the room now. A few information on this code. So we have prepared for you some user interface. What this is doing is just user interface, which is um, which has been made in React using the popular React framework, because it is it's, it's really it's a framework which is really useful in this kind of contexts here, and is what you would use in a real application. As I said, we have just the UI. What we will do today is fill in the blanks to actually connect to SignalWire and to use the SDK. Um, how we will do that? Well, as you can see, we will use this platform here. You will receive the link in a, in a moment. This platform here is called Code Sandbox, and it is an integrated IDE, uh, in, uh, integrated developer environment. You have uh, a list of files here on the left. If you don't see the list of files, make sure to click the second button on the on the sidebar. I will give you I will give you some times to 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 open actually the, the web page. I see I see you have received the link in the chat. So please open that now. And yeah, it's very simple. On the left, you find the list of files. In the middle, you find the code. And on the right, you find a live preview of the of the application. We will work like this. In the code, there are some comments I have left, like these ones. There are to do comments, and they and they represent key things that we need to do to make this application work. These are, are not UI related. This is actually the core functionality that we are interested in. I, I, I strongly suggest that you follow along by writing this yourself, but if you don't want to, or if you, if you have some fear of missing something, you can just go ahead and uncomment the code that you find below. So for almost each of the to-dos, we have some corresponding code that you can just uncomment and it will work. For some of them, you will need to write them yourself, but don't worry, they're very, they're very easy. Should you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the chat. And one of our people will answer them, will help you. OK, so now that I guess everyone uh, has got access to, to this page, you should go ahead and fork this sandbox so that you can save your changes. And here's how to do that. When you open this page, on the top right corner, you should see some buttons. One of these buttons is called Fork. Click that button now. It may ask you to log in, but you don't have to. There is a, a link at the bottom which says uh, Continue as Guest or something like that. If you cannot see the button, don't worry. You can go to the top left corner of the, of the page and then go to File and Fork Sandbox. I will do this now. OK, it's forked. It may give you some error on the right. Don't worry, just refresh the, click the Refresh button, and it will go away. I'll give you some seconds to fork the code sandbox. All right. Let's go back to the list of files I was talking about. So you should be able to open the, the Explorer tab on the left and see the list of files. Now, this application is made of several files, but we'll be mostly interested in some of them. For example, we'll be interested in the video.js file. And this is what contains 
the actual um, core usage of the SDK, of the Sigmund Wire SDK. Video.js implements the component that you previously saw as a black rectangle in the page and all the network connections related to that. Then we have incall.js under pages. You may need to expand these folders if you can't see the files. So under source pages in code.js, you find um, some another component, which is this one. I will show it to you. I'll show it to you in the application. This this one. It is this page here uh, that is shown while you are in a call. This page so contains the, the video.js component, but also contains a list of participants and some buttons at the bottom. If you see some errors, don't worry. Most of them are due to the fact that this implementation is partial. Remember, we still need to code the sum of the bits. These are all the files that we are concerned about right now. So why don't we go ahead and open video.js? So please, um, with me, go to source components and video.js and, and look at the top of the file. Now, if, you, if you're here at the top of the file, you will see um, some imports. One of them is, is needed to import the signal wire SDK. It, it is this line here which says import star as signal wire from signal wire JS. We have installed the SDK for you so that you don't have to, but this is just available on NPM or, um, or several other means. Just below that, you have a server location. This is just a constant, which we have initialized with the URL of the, of the server I was talking about before of the receptionist, right? And I can show this to you. You don't have to, to go here, but if you go to serverlocation.js, you see uh, the URL of the server. Let's go back to video.js. Below that, you see this video component here. And this video component takes some parameters. The parameters that it takes are on room init and on room update. Don't worry about those. These are needed for updating the UI. We have some join details. So the login screen, the one that we see here, the login screen, will pass to this component um, the name of the room that we want to join and the name of the user. We have some other stuff we don't care about. We have um, another callback, which will be called when we need to update the list of members in the room because the list of members has changed or something changed in, in one of the members. And these are all the parameters that are passed to our video component. Let's see what we have to do now. Scroll down to the first to-do. This is on line 23. Now, this first to-do says get an authentication token. If you remember, we are the client in the browser and we, we need to speak the receptionist to get a key. And this is what we are doing now. We are going to ask the receptionist to handle us a key to a given room. We will do that by making a post request to the server that we have prepared for you. So we, do the, we can do this by using Axios, which is a useful library for, for HTTP requests. And so let's do this. Let me, and let me enlarge the screen. We can say const apply equal await, because it is an asynchronous call, Axios to post. And we take the location of the server, server location, Plus, there's an endpoint that we have defined. This is not something that is part of the SDK. This is just an endpoint that we have 
defined in our the server that we wrote this is public slash video token this will gives will give us um, a token we need to pass some information to the receptionist we need to say who we are so username join details dot name and we need to say the room the name of the room that we want to join Room name join details dot room join details if you remember is a thing that we find that, that we get as a parameter we can add another thing within join details we have an additional boolean flag that tells us whether we are administrators of the room or standard users so we can also pass this to to the server to let it decide which permissions to give us and we can say mod which stands for moderator um, join details dot mod use the the double exclamation mark just to cast this to a boolean all right after this um, axios will give us a, a reply which contains the reply of the server we need to extract the token so we can say const token equal reply.data.token and this will get us a token i'll give you some time to write this and then we need to do something else. We need to use this token to actually enter the room. Go below and find the other to-do. Now this second to-do says, initialize a room session object. What we are doing here, we are creating some sort of JavaScript handle that we will use for controlling properties of the room. Now we can say so we can write something like this room session equal new signal wire dot video room session. This is the first time that we are actually using the signal wire SDK. We need to pass some parameters to these room sessions and the parameter that we pass is are first the token that we got just a moment ago. So token is stored in the token variable. And the second thing that we need to pass is the HTML element where we want the video to show up. We had that black rectangle. We want the video to go in there. So what we do now, we add this property here, this parameter, root element and we give it um, as a value the html element that we want and this html element i will show this to you it's at the bottom of this um, file here now trust me but this element here this div here has an id which is video root and this is exactly the black rectangle. So I will take this and I'm going back and I will do document dot query element query selector. And I will put here a hash video root. So now we've got the actual um, HTML element here. Now let's go down and let's go, let's not go to the next to do, which would be initialize the list of members and so on and so forth, but let's go further below. If you keep going further below, you will find a to the comments that says time to join the room. So let's do that. And pay attention because you have to you have to to write this yourself. There is no 
uh, code that you can uncomment this time. But you can do it because it's very easy. It's just a line of code. I will write this. We just need to call the, well, we can await because we're going to do an asynchronous call. And we can say room session dot, how do we join the room? We call join. All right. And then I'm going to save this. Now, if you have done this with me, and I'll give you some time to do this while I'm talking, you can also save the file and you can reload the, the window, the, the panel on the right, just to make sure that it's refreshed. Now you can try entering a name and a room. If you want, use the same room uh, I do. So live wire and then click join it's going to say loading and after a bit you will see your video in the in the room yeah. and i already see yeah. someone here yeah. i will leave because as you may have noticed the mute and mute buttons don't work yet we still need to to, to make them work. So let's close this for a moment and let's go back to the to the to-dos that we left in the in the process. So let's go back up. There's one to do. Uh, in, in my window is line 56, but it may be different in yards because I have added some I didn't remove some of the comments. So anyway this says to do initialize the list of members and sync the UI with the state of this member. Now, what does it, this mean? This will help us fill the list of members that would be in the right-hand side of the window. To do this, we will subscribe to an event. And this event, this, this is an event that will trigger as soon as we successfully join the room. There, is some, there are some network exchanges. As soon as these network exchanges are done, we will join the room and this event will trigger. And this is how we do this. Room session dot on. And we can say room dot join. This is the keyword. And we can pass an event handler to this event. I'm passing here an event handler. In this event handler, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to, well, we get in this event handler, we get a reference to all the members that are in the room. And this is, uh, you, you can access this list like this um, e.roomsession.members. This contains all the members in the room. Among these members, we need to find um, the, the, the structure which represents ourselves. Why? Because we want to initialize the buttons in the UI. We want to set them to muted if we are muted, unmuted if we are unmuted, and so on. So we can say, OK, no problem. We can, we can filter this, um, this array. And we can do this like this, const this member which is ourselves, equal e dot from session dot members dot find. And we can find for each member, we check whether the ID of the member in the array is equal to e dot member ID, which represents ourselves. Once we get this information, we can call a function, which is, this is a function of the UI, it's not part of the SDK, but we will call this to update the UI. And it's called on room updates member member property takes this member. We are saying to the UI, okay, initialize all the buttons using uh, this structure here. We will also do another call to initialize the list of members. And we will call on member list update. Again, this is a function of the UI. 
and we just pass the list of members e dot room session dot members all right and you can save now the list of members will work when you join the room but will not be updated when after that right because room dot joins only happens when you join the room. We need something to keep it in sync, to keep the UI in sync. And we can do that. We can do, we can, we can go below. There's another to do. And this to do says, keep the list of members in sync with the UI. So um, find that to do. Once you find it, again, for me, it's line 79, but it may change for you. When you go there, you can subscribe to a different event in a similar way as we did before. We can say room session on, and we say member list dot updated. And the event handler will just do one thing. We'll call again the on member list update function that we called before in the room joined uh, event. And we pass e dot members, which contains the updated list of members, because this event will trigger whenever something changes in the list of members. There are other events that you could use. I'll show you some of them, but we will not do anything specific. We will just uh, show a notification. For example, when someone joins a room, you see a to do here below. So in this to do we can we, we can sub, for this to do we can subtract the member dot joined event and this event will trigger whenever um, some other member joins the current room. So let's do this room session dot on member joined. Okay, we pass an event handler e, and we can just call this event logger function. We say e.member.name has joined the room. Okay, so everyone, someone joins, we show. Uh, just some notification in the window. We can do something similar when someone leaves. We can say room session room, room session on. And this event is called member.left. We pass an event handler. And here we can check. Well, we can check whether someone else left the room or whether we actually left the room for some reason. So we could say if e.member.id is equal to what is the ID of ourselves where it is room session member ID. If this is equal, means that we are leaving the room, we can say on room update to update the UI, pass left room. Otherwise, we just show our notification again. So event logger a.member.name plus I add has left the room. Okay, I'll give you some time to 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 write this if you want. Otherwise, just as usual, uncomment the the snippet of code that you find below the to do. At this point, we already joined the room, so um, this to do is already done. But if you remember, we had 
another problem problem now we fixed the list of members but the mute unmute buttons they didn't work and they didn't allow choosing different devices now we can fix this we can we can first take the we, we, we can handle the the device selector right now to do that we need to access the list of devices the list of cameras or microphones or speakers even that are available on our computer and this may sound extremely difficult but it's really trivial using this api you can just do like this so i will not write this i will just uncomment this so feel free to do the same it's just uh one method call for each device category so to get the list of cameras we will await it is an asynchronous call we will await uh, on the signal.webrtc.get camera devices with permissions and this will also ask the user for permission to use the that camera all right the stuff below i will quickly get through that but you don't have to write average anything these are just um, device watchers to to make sure that the UI, the list of available devices gets updated whenever you, you, you may disconnect your Microsoft microphone, for example, or you connect an additional camera. And then we, we want to receive some, some event you see here changed. So whenever the list of cameras changed, we just update the, the room. And we can try this. There is nothing else in this file. So again, save. Make sure you save the file with Control S, Command S if you are on a Mac, and refresh the panel of, on the right. Enter your name, Daniele. I've got fire. I will join this room. And hey, hi, Dave. You see, some, someone else is here. I can mute myself. I just muted myself. And if I want, hey, Azim, if I want, I can mute my, 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 my camera. Actually, actually, sorry, this is not muting yet. It's just the UI updating but because we need to fix something for that to work. But what is working here? 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 What is working here is the selector of the, of the devices. You can see here, all my devices appeared in this selector and in this one too. Now let me leave because we don't have yet the ability to mute or unmute our, ourselves. And this can be messy, you know? So uh, let's fix that. Fix this, we need to change file. We need to go to the UI file. And if you remember, the file that contains the UI stuff is in call.js. Inside the in call.js, we have the, the UI of the buttons at the bottom. So we can just go to line we can just look for a line here line 148 148 you see the familiar to do comment give you some time to switch file the line 148 we need to mute our video. So this, this is a button. This is the split button that you see in the UI. And, uh, and this here, that the one that I am selecting, is the callback that is called, the code that is called when you click that button. Now, we, inside that, we need to check if the button is 
in the mute state or unmute state and um, act accordingly with the SDK. Now in this file, we have a reference to the room session object that we used in the video.js file. So what we can do is simply await room session dot we want to mute our video because this is the button for video. So room session dot video mute. Oh, whoops, video mute. Make this call to mute our video. Or if we were already muted, we can unmute ourselves. And to unmute ourselves, we will uh, well, you, you need to write this yourself. There is not to do comment here. So pay attention because, well, actually it's really trivial. Uh, as you can guess, you can just say await room session dot. Uh, this is clearly video unmute. All right. And while we are here, Let's go below and encode what happens when you actually pick one of the additional devices that showed up before. For example, this is this again the selector for the camera. If I select a different camera here, I receive an ID. The button gives me a, 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 an ID and I have a reference to the room session. So what I can do is this await room session dot update camera. I can call this method. And what I pass here as a parameter is the is the ID of the device that I want to use instead of the current one. And this ID is in the ID parameter of this uh, callback. So device ID takes ID. Now let's let's try it again. Let's save the file. Let's refresh the page. And everything will work. So Daniele, room live wire. Let's join this. Take some time to load. Here we are. And now I can mute my microphone. I can mute my camera. You see, I'm currently muted. Or let me try this. Let me try to switch camera. I could say I want this camera. Here we are, I just switched camera. Let me, let me mute myself again. All right. Now, we have built all we needed to build. We will see next time how to actually make this, this screen sharing button work while we also code the, well, we also code the room previews features. But um, for now, you can just go ahead and, for example, use this button here, the invite button to invite your friends into this room that you have just built. All right, um, we are done for today for coding. So let's start our, our Q&A session now. Please, please feel free to ask now any, any question you may have. Um, you can either un unmute your microphone or write, in, or write in the chat. We have a bunch of people here that can, can answer you. Let's, let's leave this. All right, any question? Let's see the chat. Hey, David. Want, David, do you want to unmute yourself to explain what you mean? It, you, can, you can use cameras from OBS if you want. Uh Danielle, I thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's kind of the interoperability question. I, I have some experience with OBS, and this seems kind of different, but I was just wondering if you guys had used any of the natives. 
sort of the native structures in OBS. Um, and I'll take a look at it more, but it was very impressive. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for your comment, David. We, we didn't actually use OBS. Uh, I don't know what you mean specifically for interaction with OBS, but this will, if you just mean the virtual camera, this will just show within your, your list of devices. So it will work quite naturally. Azim update view is, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but yeah, I think this is um, um, a function call, call that is not part of the SDK, is part of just of the UI that we have built today for, for this. Got it, that makes sense, thank you. Thanks for the question. Dave, you say, you mentioned that it connects to a server rather than direct. Is there a limit on the number of users per call on these? Yes, you are correct. This um, connects to second wire servers. So the, the networking link is established with second wire servers. And there is no uh, specific limit. You, you can have a, a lot of participants in the room without any, any problem. Other questions? I think Dave Amison's question is very important. Uh, Daniele, maybe would you kindly address that? Um, I see this one. Can you host your own SigmaWire rather than going through a SigmaWire hosted server? Luca, want, want to answer that? Sorry, the to find the unmute. Yeah, sure. So uh, actually not. Uh, so the the actual video server is hosted by SignalWire as part of our cloud. You can run your own backend to create the uh, tokens you need, and that's going to work. But the video part is going to live on, uh, on SignalWire itself. We have a hosted sort of offering, but it go, generally goes through sales, and it's really just for specific use cases. IPv6 probably works. I'll, I'll have to find out for you, but um, I think we support IPv6, IPv6 across the, the platform. So I I need to find out for if you really need an answer, I can go find out for you. And yeah, that was awesome, by the way. Thank you. Thanks everyone for attending.